everyone. I am so happy to be talking to author Owen Mullen today. And his newest book that just came out is called Delaney, and so it began. Thank you so much for talking to me today, Owen. Oh, it's wonderful to speak to you again, Michelle. Yeah, we had talked back in August, which isn't very long yep. ago. And, yep. um, you know, when we talked about your Charlie Cameron series, but I have to tell you, Owen, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, my God, this book is amazing. Okay. Thank your you other very books much. were great. And I love them, but this book is amazing. Okay. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> why is why is that? Why is that in your opinion? I What's the difference? I, right. Um, there was something about the voice of Delaney that really resonated with me, and I was trying to yeah. think about that too because um, I had been I've been to New Orleans a couple of times. You got yeah. that dead on. Okay, you've got yeah, the whole good. feel going. I mean, it was perfect. Okay. And then his character, there's something about him that, and of course, I could kind of hear your voice in him, but there mm-hmm. was something that just resonated about this character that I Good. loved. I loved his vulnerability. I loved his um, the way that he could tune into his emotions. I loved his relationship with his dog. And yeah, then yeah. I loved how he struggled with doing what's right. And also with not really wanting to do the things that he had to do because it was right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, we can all identify with that one, I think, can't we? Yes, we can. And and I loved how in his voice, you know, to hear the things that, like, he, he didn't really want to go back there. He was retired. He didn't really want to be involved. Yeah. And yet he yeah. had a personal... Um, he had a personal dilemma with it because yeah. his niece was in these pageants. So, you know, to set this up for everybody, Delaney, Vincent Delaney, he's a, he's a former um, police department, New Orleans police department, and then he becomes a PI because he had a bad situation. He wanted to be done with the police. And um, and then all these things come back. So, you know, one of the guys that he um, was involved with get, escapes and is after him. So he's got that going. You know, he's got that in that storyline. Then he's got these small business owners, and he's got he's trying to help them because they're being extorted. And then he has these pageant deaths that are happening, and nobody can figure it out. So he's got all these um, – he's kind of juggling all of these things, but I, I don't know. I just love the way you did it. I love the chapters. I love how I kept Great. wanting to read more after I was finished with the chapter because I was traveling this weekend. And I, as yeah. I was reading it, I kept – every time I went to a restaurant, every time, you know, I opened your book, I'm like, I can get a chapter in. I can get a chapter <laughs> in, you know? And, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And, and that's just how – I mean, I think you really have something with this guy. And this is like oh, great. you are going to keep going with him, right? Well, um, we've got the second book already written, actually, Michelle. But um, we're, we're, we're going to uh, – We'll get some other ideas that we're going to put into it. So, uh, but yeah, the idea is that uh, there is another one. There's, I've actually got the, 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 the next one written, and the idea for the one after that. So, um, yeah, it's got the legs. If people want want to read it, it's certainly got legs. Um, the interesting thing about it, okay, shall I tell you something about it? How it came to be? Yes, I I, I definitely want to hear how it came to be. Oh, okay. Um, the, when I started writing. Um, this was the second book I actually wrote, but it wasn't called Delaney and So Began. It wasn't called And So Began. It had a different title. Um, and the reason I wrote it um, was just to see if I could write a detective. I'd never written a detective before. I thought I wrote this before the Glasgow uh, books. I'd never written a detective before. And I wanted to see if I could do it because crime fiction has got different disciplines. There are things you need to do. You've got to dot the I's, cross the T's. All the things have got to add, add up, red herrings in there. You've got to have characterization. You have, need to have that in any book, of course. But it's a slightly different um, puzzle and problem from writing, say, a romance or something else. The story's got to have a, a certain kind of turn to it. So I wrote, wrote it to see if I could do it, and I could do it. Um, and nobody wanted to read it, uh, and I actually um, put it in a bottom drawer in a wardrobe, uh, and there it sat until my wife Christine dug it out about a year ago and happened to read it and said, "This is too good 
to be sitting in the, the bottom of the drawer as <laughs> a book. So she, because she is a fantastic editor, she stripped out 40,000 words, which is half the book, half the book that existed, and we together we started to report it and realign the character and create create a stronger character than I believe than was in the original one. Um, and uh, then we had the idea, they had a dog, but we did say the, the dog should be what you're saying, the dog should be more of a, a character. In the next book, uh, from because of what happens in this book, I almost gave it away there, uh, because of what happens in this book, the dog is going to feature uh, more strongly in the next one, become really like his partner. Now, the fine line is we don't want to become stupid about it. Uh, we don't want to become some kind of a comic thing. But uh, there is a, there's a good humanity to be had from, from the, the relationship with the dog. It makes uh, Delaney uh, a decent guy. I mean, I think probably someone who likes animals has probably got some good going on in them. Um, so the, he's very, very close to the dog. I think we'll get more of his music in there, more of his playing in the band. Um, and again, there are two two tales in all, at least two tales in all my books. And there's a reason for that as well. That's because I can't actually... I want to know what else does he do. I think I said this to you the last time. What does he do when he's not doing the one case? Um, and does he go home? Does he just watch TV with the rest of us? Is he a boring guy? Or has he got a wife? Has he got a partner? What does he eat? Who does he hang out with? So to try to get all that stuff going on. Um, but I'm so, so, so glad you really, really like this one. Thanks for that. Yeah, and I left you a nice a nice little Amazon review, which I'm trying to do some more of. Because I'm really oh, have you really? Have mm-hmm. you really? Yes. Is it on? Is it on dot com? Is it on dot dot co dot uk? I don't know. I just at the end of because I read it on Kindle, and at the end they oh. give you the opportunity to write a review. So I just I do yeah, that yeah. now, like right away. And, well, I'm I'm, know, I'm going to go over and read that right now. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with the, with thriller books, what I always thought that James Patterson, you know, when I used to read his, what I always thought that the key to his success was how tight he made his books, okay? There wasn't mm-hmm. a lot of, like, stuff that you didn't want to read, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, what I yeah. found in this book is that it was so tight. You didn't want to skip, you know, there were no frivolous chapters that you could have missed or wanted to miss. Yeah. It was so tight. And, of course, we don't talk endings because we never do. You and I don't talk <laughs> and I never Absolutely talk endings not. anyway. But the ending was so amazing. You know, it just, I was like, blown away okay Fantastic. And it, it, but it made sense but i didn't see it coming okay at all yeah as a yeah in fact i have to tell you that most thriller books i can tell halfway through i have an idea and i had no idea none well that's well this is all this is great uh, i think i have to speak to you every day then um. <laughs> I, am, I am one of your biggest fans, Owen, and I'm telling oh, you, fantastic. like I was telling the person I was with this weekend while I was reading it, I was like, I was, you know, I've always been an Owen fan, and now I'm like, I want to tell everybody that if they like a thriller book, this is the book to read, okay? Because you fantastic. like the guy, and it, like I said, it's it's tight, it's you know, it's the chapters yeah. are read really well in it, and it one thing just leads to the next, and. Even though it seems as though he has a lot going on, the way you juggled back and forth between the between all of it, you know, even yeah. his personal relationships with his, you know, ex fiance and with his girlfriend, and it all was very smooth. And I didn't feel like um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm I don't know which way to get like you know they kind of get out mm-hmm. of context. I did not feel that way. I felt like it all blended so beautifully. Well, well, I'm so glad to, so glad to hear this. When the, the ambition, the ultimate, ultimate ambition for me, Michelle, is to try to send this to you again the last time, uh, is to try to write a book that I would want to read. Now, when I'm reading, I'm quite a simple soul. Um, I'm big on story. I'm big on character when I'm reading. I'm big on dialogue and setting. I'm not, I'm not big on... I'm, I, I love descriptions, but they have to count and punch the weight and come in at the right time. I'm not big on, you know, side, side tracking down for 20 pages on some issue that isn't really important, even though the writing... Now, other people re- really love all that. I, I get that. I dig that. Um, and, and good luck to them. But but when it comes to what I want to read, um, I'll tell you, for example, at the moment, 
Oh, I'm reading John Connolly, and I'm really enjoying him. Mm-hmm. Um, do, you, do you know John Connolly? Yes, I do. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really enjoying him. Um, so, uh, and he can write. You know, it's not a question of um, um, making it not, not, not a kind of literate thing. It's, it's trying to get the balance between this is actually kind of good in, in, in the language department, and it's also good. You know, I think it's a blend between uh, getting a story told uh, and writing it well. Um, some people are great storytellers, but the writing isn't great. And some other people are great writers, but the story maybe isn't just as strong as some other people's stories. So I want to try to get those two things going on with me and not bog the reader down at the same time in, in how many f- f- flourishes I can do and things like that. Um, you know when you're reading and you think, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't want to know this. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. You know, right. I, I want to right. have the reader not not doing that. You know, so they're with me all the way, so that every page actually actually takes the story forward or the stories forward. That's the idea. Yes, and I do think I, you know, I'm I'm kind of one of those people that thinks if you can't do it, if you can't wrap it up in 350 pages or less, you're going to lose me on a thriller. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, there yeah. are books that I've read that are longer and and that have been good, but usually they're not thrillers. Usually they're yeah, not yeah. this kind of a book because there's, you know, like there's an art form to getting it. That's what I was trying to say, like to get it that tight that it's yeah. like, and, and first of all, you only went to New Orleans one time, correct? Um, I, um, no, I've actually been twice. Um, but actually, I've actually been twice. Um, I forgot I was there a long time ago and I'm going again next year. Um, but, but the New Orleans, you've been a couple of times yourself, haven't you? I have, and I'm actually going again next year too because I would. Oh, you really? Usually, yeah, I usually go in October, and it's really good. That we went somewhere else this time, and I'm really happy because a hurricane came through last weekend. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm glad that I didn't make plans to go there then. So that that was yeah. good. But um, I am going to go next October. And, you know, that that's the plan because I love going down there then. The weather is beautiful, and um, I've gotten to sightsee around a lot. But I love how you yeah. fit in the different the, the different scenery, but it didn't make it – it wasn't too much. It wasn't – sometimes the authors want to prove to you that they've been somewhere and, you know, they Absolutely. get into real details. And I got the feel of the place without getting bogged down by too many details of it, you know. Well, absolutely. I just, I just read a book, you know, quite recently um, by someone, and uh, honestly, I, I liked it, but they, they had crammed in every single piece of – um, knowledge. Uh, it was obvious that it was obvious that they were trying to get across the idea. Listen, I've been here, or I know about <laughs> right. it, and, and, that, and that was fine. That was fine. I mean, New Orleans is, is on New Orleans is a is kind of an interesting setting, right, right there, right at the beginning. It's right. Got that ba- it's got that balmy feel. It's got that kind of sleazy, well, not kind of sleazy past. A sleazy history, you know, it all uh, came, you know, I don't, do you know the history at all in New Orleans? I know, you know, a bit enough, you know, as an American, like, yeah. I don't, I know more now that I've been there more, because yeah. I went to visit a lot of the museums down there, and so that kind of helps with their history, but, yeah. um, you know, I didn't, I don't, I I'm probably it probably is an area that I I'm not as strong in because I'm in the north yeah. I'm in Pennsylvania I'm in the Northeast so you know my of history of that is not that strong but it's certainly getting better the more I visit. Well, it's, all, it's always it's always had a kind of body um, past to it. Yes. You know, Jelly Roll Morton came from there and all these kind of things and and they, they used to have the, the the red light district there which was which was big news. And I think in the beginning, they shipped over a whole lot of women that they brought out, got out of prison to be wives for the guys who were doing the settling there. Um, and it's always been a kind of raucous place. Um, uh, and then, of course, you had on top of that, it's got the Creole Cajun mix, and then you had all the cuisine on top of that. Oh, and, my and God. The idea, right. the, yeah, the idea for me is, as you are saying, but let's get some of it in, but not all of it in. There are other books where we can expand these things and, and prove, <laughs> prove I know a little bit about it, you know. Um, yeah. without, without actually wanting to be an expert, you know, it's not about being an expert or anything. It's about telling a tale, telling a story at the end of the day, isn't it? 
Yes, exactly. It's just telling a story and getting the feel of where it is in, you know, without having, it didn't matter. It didn't matter about what was going, because, you know, first of all, the murders are happening everywhere. And I have to tell you, so at first, all right, I'm not, thrillers are, you know, whenever they involve children, I always get, because I have six children, I have seven grandchildren, you know, I always yeah. like, like, ugh. But I have to say that it wasn't, um, you keep it very non-grotesque if that makes yeah. sense to everybody yeah, out there, yeah. is that yeah. it isn't detail-oriented. I mean, we know bad things happen. We don't have to know, like, really bad things. Like, we don't have to get a description of how bad it was. We just need to Comple- know I, compl- it's bad. I completely, completely agree with you. Um, again, that's one of the kind of guiding lights. I want it to be gritty, as they say. I want it to be that. Right. I want it to be tense. I want it to be exciting. But, but I don't want it to be disgusting. I don't want right. it to be turned. I don't want to have to turn my face away from the page, and I mean I don't want to read that. I also don't want to write it. Exactly. I don't want that in my. <laughs> maybe they want that in their head. Well, no, I, well, I wouldn't. Maybe someone would. I, I wouldn't. So, so that's the challenge. How do you get these things across without putting everybody uh, or many people off the thing? Um, so I, I would never describe. Um, a child being molested or, or anything. I just just wouldn't do it. Um, it's just not who I am. It's not what I want to do. So um, if I'm succeeding and I am succeeding, there's there's there's, there's also uh, there's, there's a serial killer in this one. This is the last time I'm going to write about a serial killer. Um, uh, I don't want to do any more serial killings. So the thing about books in the modern area, it seems that everybody wants a, a murder on every 14th page. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Uh, or, or otherwise, otherwise it's not kind of gory enough for, or exciting enough. So, in the next one, uh, the next one, two tales in it, and uh, I really like the writing in the next one. By the way, I think it's some of my best writing. Now, many people don't give two hoots about that; they really just want story. But I think the story's told and written well. I hope so. I hope so. Anyway, you know. But, you, but you'll be telling me no doubt. <laughs> I will be. I will be. And I, okay, so this one, do you have a title yet for the next one? Oh, I have. I have, Michelle, but I, I can't. I, if, I, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I first of all, like, you know, I always like to tell people when I love their covers, I love the cover of this. And I'm not. Oh, do you? I want, oh, my goodness, I do. And I don't even want people to know why. I want them to read it to find out why this cover is amazing because of how it pertains to the story. And so well, listen, they this, have to... well, this is that's exactly how I feel about it. That's exactly how I feel about it. We tried. The publisher sent me. They tried very hard for me. They sent me, I think, thirteen different covers, and none of them are quite right. And then, I, and I had an idea for this, and I, I, still, I won't, won't spoil it. I had an idea, and the publisher said that's a great idea. But she came back to me about five minutes later and said, but it would. There are copyright problems, uh, blah, blah, blah. It would take a long time to get it. We don't have the time, right. et cetera, et cetera. And I said, uh, okay, but can you do something creative with the idea? Uh, and you you read the book. It's on page three or something. So, And she come back 20 minutes later and said, what about this? And I said, well, yeah, that's fantastic. It looks like... It looks like rem, reminds me of a clockwork orange or something like that. Do you remember the artwork from the clock, clockwork orange? Uh, yeah, maybe before your time. <laughs> it was a, that was a little bit before my time, but I do love the fact that it is. I'm glad that it had to be artsy about it because yeah, yeah. you know what? When I saw the cover, um, you know, and I'm reading it on Kindle, so I'm not really looking at the cover that much. I just saw the, yeah, co- yeah. you know, I see the cover, and then when I got done and I went back and I was like, oh, that's what it is. That is amazing. Like you know, if I would have seen it yeah. daily, I would have understood earlier than I did. Yeah. But I'm kind of glad I didn't because I. You know, I got done with the story, and then I went back and looked at the cover again, and I was like, "Ah, oh, amazing, amazing cover! I'm, I'm so happy about that cover." Well, do you know, you know what's happening here, Michelle? You're reading this book that I wrote. No, not every when someone re- reads a book, it becomes their book to read. Do you know what I mean? And they can mm-hmm. do their own interpretation. But you're reading what, what I, what I read. Uh, what I wrote, so you're actually reading the book that I wrote, and you're seeing it, and you're getting from it 
what I intended, to, what I got from it, what I intended uh, me to get from it, you to get from it. And that doesn't happen. I'm not patronising you, but that doesn't happen all the time. When you speak to someone and say, oh, at this point, you go, yeah, I agree with that. At that point, oh, yeah. So isn't that amazing? Aww. Well, you know, you know, I love your writing. I mean, you know how I feel about you. And you are so inspiring to me because um, you, you're doing this later in your life. And, and there was a time that, you know, I thought that after I had all my children that that was it. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And, and then I yeah. see people like you who are, you know, being so successful. And it's like, oh, I get to do other things. I then raise children. That's so awesome. I get to do other things. And, and you're proving <laughs> that. And, and I was right there with you. Um, you know, you came so close to winning that award um, yeah, that yeah. I was following you on. But you know what? This book, whatever I was thinking to myself when I read it, whatever award comes up next that you, this book gets in, it will win. Okay? My goodness, that's well. I, I can't. Be, I can't <laughs> believe. I can't believe you're saying this. So it's, this is just <laughs> just fantastic. Um, yeah. Um, well, it's always next year. I, I enjoyed the award and being. You know, with Ian Rankin and uh, Val McDermott and, and uh, all right. those famous, famous people. You know, um, it was a, it was a, it was a thrill to be in, involved in that. And of course, I got quite a lot of kudos um, from just hanging out with getting so far. Um, a pretty unknown guy, but uh, uh, I guess yeah, you are going to be very unknown for long. Everybody's going to know you. And well, that's uh, well, let's hope that is the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but and I was. I, it was. It was. It, it was my birthday yesterday, and do you know what I did? I, I know on Monday rather. You know what I did? I wrote. I just wrote all day. That's what I did. Yeah. I'm writing the fourth. The fourth Glasgow book. Um, so I'm sixty, almost seventy thousand words into that. That will be finished by the end of the month. Um, so that's wow. what I did for my birthday. So. I hope, I hope that's we can right. meet. And you know what? My birthday's Saturday, and that's what I was. I was like, I have to tell Owen happy birthday and how close our birthdays are. So, well, happy birthday to you too, then, Michelle. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, when will we see the next one in this? I, you know, since it's like out there, you know, waiting for publishing. Okay. Um, well, that all depends. Uh, you're, you're in a, you're in a, it all depends on the publisher. They have many other authors who've always got to. They have a, a line of publication dates, and we haven't discussed that yet because, of course, we still have some work to do on it. I haven't presented it to them. We'll see how this big book goes. It's, it started off pretty well. We'll see how it goes. Um, if, if it's half as successful as you think it will be, then um, uh, doing, doing pretty well in the U.S. and in Canada, I have to say. I just noticed that. So, But it's all early days. Um, and we'll see. I would, I would like to. I mean, we, we're going back to New Orleans next year, um, and we're going to stay for a month, I think, um, and just, just to, to reinforce the feel, just to, just to look around. Cities, even when we're back in Glasgow, we notice that the city changes so quickly. You know, mm, you thought, it's true. You thought that, I, they, in, in the Charlie Cameron series, he parks his car in a place called High Street, a, par, a car park at High Street, a place in Glasgow. I just noticed when I was there a few weeks ago, he doesn't park it there anymore because they're, they're turning it into an office park or something. But if I hadn't checked that out, I'd be saying something that's just not right. You know, someone from Glasgow would say, listen, uh, time, time you've got your research together there, mate, because uh, this isn't right. So uh, cities change all the time, so you've got to keep up with uh, how they look now even, just a part of how they feel, you know. So we could be back there again. Good to go back yeah, there again. Absolutely. And you know what? The first time I stayed in New Orleans, I stayed in downtown, right downtown. Yeah. And then I realized that was just way too loud for me, okay? I'm not that. I'm yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah, yeah. So, so the next time we stayed over by the um, Astrodome, and it was a way better Comfort. experience because we could still walk into town. But yeah, you know, yeah. I always find that too with cities. If I go there more than once, I want to stay at a different part. I want to get a different feel for the different parts of the city. You know. Well, we were actually talking about um, splitting a trip up into staying one place for maybe a week or so, and then staying another place for yeah. just for that reason. Yeah. Just to get a different bus into town or a different tram into town or just to just to see different shops. Or, you know, our neighborhoods are different, so uh, 
Uh, yeah, and I learned, by the way, if you're there next October, and, and if it turns out that it's October, we're going, maybe we could hook up in, in New York. Oh, my goodness, that would be amazing. You know, I will figure it out. You know, when you when you decide when you're coming here, uh, we will figure something yeah. out, and I will, yeah. you know, try to get to see you. But I want to tell everybody, I will have it on all my social media. I will have this interview. I'll have your other interview, and I will post the links to you, to the Amazon link to this book, and yeah. I will I will tell as many people as I can know. I will, I will well, take it as far as I can. That's very, very generous of you, Michelle, and it's very much appreciated, believe me. Great to speak to you again, by the way. Yes, yeah, very nice to speak to you. You have an amazing you sound day. Good like time. Said, you sound good. Is life all right? Yeah, you sound great. Yeah, well, I'm I'm all right, but uh, are, you, are you okay? Everything going well? Oh, am I okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I'm yeah, not at all. Now. Not at all. <laughs> okay, well, listen, um, I'll look out. You can give me a line when it's, when it's all going on, and I'll, I'll have a looking yeah, forward to hearing that. Yeah, about a week, week and a half, and I, I will get this link yeah. to you, and we can just share it all over the place and get this book out there, everybody. You want to read this book. If you love thrillers, you will love this book. So I will have all the links underneath here, and uh, and I want to, and, and we will hook up, Owen. I know we will. So Yeah, that would yeah, be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, listen, awesome. thank you again. Thank, Thank you again you. for doing this, speaking to me. Great to talk to you. And Great take to care. Talk to you. you too. Bye-bye. Thanks, Michelle. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.